We've got uh, ShopRite CEO Whitey Basson standing by with me right now, and he's going to run through uh, those earnings. There we go. We've got them up on the screen, Whitey. I'm just going to read through them. Hips up by 11.3%, turnover up 12.1%, trading profit 15.6%. Uh, and that is something that everyone's focusing on right now, the fact that you've been able to grow profits for the first time at a stronger pace than your top line. So how did you do that? Well, I think it's probably mostly, well, not probably, it is mostly savings. We've worked on it for a couple of years. We've actually been doing it for a few years now. And uh, we've taken a lot of cost out of the system from, from farming, if you, I could go back that far, to consumer with good distribution areas, lots of new stores, only one CEO store, and, uh, and very few other people that take lots of money out of the company. Let's go to uh, the farming aspect that you mentioned there, because taking costs out of the system, is that, a, is that a squeezing the suppliers? Well, you know, that, that is a debate that can go on all night long, but I mean, obviously, there's always a squeeze from somebody. So it's either suppliers squeezing us or us supply, squeezing suppliers. But we try and be fair. We are the biggest buyers of, mm -hmm. of produce in South Africa, probably right now. So we have to maintain good relationships with people in South Africa that can produce. But then they will always complain, and we will always complain. Mm -hmm. um, so as you say, a debate that can go on forever, but you have said in South Africa it certainly has, and as you say in the results, a most taxing trading environment right now. So how has the overall group, certainly in South Africa, responded to uh, the uh, tough environment when you're talking about growth here? Well, the results speak for themselves. We, we did very well in the checkers end of the market, in the lower end of the market, in the use saves very nicely. Uh, ShopRite was a bit uh, taken out f by USAVE and checkers to the top end with expanding into checkers. But uh, overall, the market, I think, is, is somewhat softer in the second half of our financial year, which is the period from December onwards. We think job creation is far behind the pace it should be. And I think the LSMs, fours to sevens, eights, are having a hard time with increases in fuel costs. Uh, and increase in other costs, which is the biggest portion of their basket. Mm -hmm. And you've said that you're going to be investing in uh, your price leader leadership position. That could have an effect on, on margins. And we've just been talking about the fact that margins are up on the period. Uh, but how much uh, are you going to fight till the bitter end? I mean, there's no bitter end, certainly. But I mean, how, how, how tough is it right now to maintain margins? And how much of, of a knock are you prepared yeah. to take on those margins? It's not really a tough fight to maintain margins. Margins. It's a tough fight for us to maintain our position as the number one and cheapest retailer. So it depends on the other people playing in the field that would depend on what prices we go out and what margins we cut out. We're certainly not going to give up our position out there, but we're responsible traders. We believe in it tomorrow, so we won't do anything that's, that's drastically wrong for either consumers or stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So who's the biggest threat right now in South Africa? Uh, I don't know. Surely you know who's the biggest be, threat in the competitive space. Is it MassMart? Is MassMart starting to, to eat away at your pie at all with their uh, discount food offering? I thought Walmart had withdrawn from South Africa. <laughs> Why do you? They're very quiet. So I mean, no, so is that not something that's affecting no, you right now? it doesn't affect us. I think, I, I think you know, we, it, they're very good players in South Africa. Pick and Pay, Spa, Walmart, they're all, they're all good players. Some of them have new CEOs, some of them have new structures. So. Uh, having been in retail as long as I've been, in, especially in food retailing, uh, y you can expect anything. It depends on the moods of people, depends on the expectations, where they want to be. I think they're responsible. I think the new guy from Pick and Pay is quite a responsible guy, won't do silly things. But you can never say for sure. But you're going to fight on price? No, we'll fight on anything. We quite like fighting, but we won't be irresponsible. Let's move outside of South Africa. Uh, you've talked about the fact that you've got uh, 41 more stores planned yes. outside of South Africa right now. And uh, the focus has been on West Africa. And certainly one of the facts that has been doing the rounds today is the fact that you've sold more Moet Chandan in <laughs> Nigeria and your seven stores than all, the, all of your liquor stores here in South Africa. Yeah. Is, does that tell us something about the uh, target market that you're catering to in Nigeria? It tells you something about a market that people refuse to accept, that the African market is a quite a wealthy market, there's very rich people, there's the richest guy in, in Africa lives in Nigeria, and we must stop ignoring the fact that those are big economies and rich economies growing at double the pace to South Africa. So we should rather concentrate on the South African economy not growing at the pace that those guys are growing at, and they have money, mm -hmm. they have spending power, and um, 
people should recognize it. How, how are you differentiating, I mean, how are you differentiating uh, your product in Nigeria relative to the competition or uh, your offering? I mean, how do you hope to be seen and positioned in those markets uh, going forward? Well, you know, the, the, the markets in the, in, in the majority of African countries are, are really market related markets. So it's, there's enough people trading at the bottom end with a container of goods that they bring in and not, no goods in the next ra round. So what you're trying to see there is a continuation of a proper range on shelf. And that immediately if, if in the beginning stages would, uh, would entail the higher LSMs in all those markets. And that would be the same as probably the, the shop right stores in South Africa uh, verging over towards, towards the checker stores in the early parts of the nines and ten LSMs. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, sorry, continue. So, so I think we're certainly not into the market of selling uh, baked beans on the streets. So we, we have modern supermarkets with air conditioning, things which is new into those countries and h helping to, to actually evolve those countries into, a, a, into a, a different dimension in all the aspects of, of business. So for the first time, lots of people from other countries in the world are exp expanding their production facilities in Nigeria. We're starting to get different mm -hmm. product ranges in there. And that all comes from supermarkets entering the market. Mm -hmm. You know, we're just looking at kind of the continent right now, and we've been talking about Walmart, but yes, they are uh, certainly looking at Africa. And we know Grant Patterson, Patterson has said that Kenya is uh, a market that they're wanting to get an entry point into. And there's been a lot of noise around Mass Mart in East Africa right now. Oh, so yeah. do you see that as you being able to dominate in the West and uh, Walmart, Mass Mart in the East? No, you know, I, I really... I, I know Grant very well, he's a nice guy. I really do not know their strategies and I certainly don't base shop right strategies on, on what other people are doing. Uh, I'm not particularly too stressed about Kenya. We've never been able to go there under normal circumstances. So uh, if Grant goes there and is successful, there are very successful chains. There's two or three very successful chains in, in Kenya. Easier to do business in that, that part of the world than in the west of, of Africa more advanced, very much like Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. Zambia, which is more e advanced economies in terms of infrastructure. But are they the best economies in the world? I'm not sure. Is it becoming easier to do business if we go back to West Africa where you say you've got production yes, facilities uh, you know, you and can, manufacturers building You can understand that every move of somebody, if, if, if uh, Tiger, for instance, brought into the in, in businesses there, they, they, they certainly have different standards of of operations, which becomes easier. We're going to put up a warehouse, so we don't. We're not too worried about the, the delay or not having goods into the store because we can carry them in the warehouse. So everything is becoming easier, but it's still very tight. I mean, you're talking 120 days mm -hmm. to get something from Cape Town into Nigeria, into through the harbors, uh, even 100 days into getting to into Angola. So it's still difficult. Uh, it's difficult to get visas in some of those countries. It's actually sometimes impossible. Africa doesn't really like doing business with, South, with Africa. So they, it's actually easier to bring stuff in from, from Europe into Africa, it seems to be.